Hi everyone and welcome to Wing It Wednesdays, the show where I talk about life as a food blogger while cooking something up and having the occasional existential crisis. And today I'm talking about how to survive as an Instagrammer, YouTuber, TikToker, you name it, while you're also an introvert while I make these panda biscuits. Cute, aren't they? She says as she casually drowns them. For the biscuits, I just tweaked the recipe that came with the panda cookie cutters I bought. I mostly stuck to it as it was written, except for the dry ingredients where I strayed. I ended up needing an extra 10 grams of flour for each of the flour mixtures. So I've written the final totals in the caption and in the description below. I also upped the cocoa to 10 grams, which is five grams more than the original recipe. I did this to get a darker chocolate dough for a better contrast. I think the reason why I needed more flour was because my egg was a bit on the big side. I'll also note this down in the description below so you can see. I got about 18 pandas out of this recipe. It depends on how thickly you roll the dough. I rolled it about 3mm thick. I also had a lot of white dough left over so I just made some plain biscuits out of that. And here are the cutters, aren't they cute? It came in a pack of four with four different panda shapes by the way. I'm using three, one is just a head. Anyway, we're going to start with stirring the butter and sugar together until fluffy, the butter has been softened to room temperature, and then dividing the liquid mixture with the butter, sugar and egg between the flour only and the flour plus cocoa powder bowls to make two different biscuit doughs. Now on to today's topic. I am an introvert. I'm so introverted that even talking to a camera has me exhausted. It's a miracle I managed to interact with fellow humans on Instagram long enough to reach 10,000 followers. So how do I do it and not go crazy? And how can you do it too? Here are my five tips. Tip number one, play to your strengths. So you're not a high octane, attends every party, talks to everyone in the room for hours kind of person. And that's okay. In fact, it can be awesome because it allows you to be more focused on what you're doing as opposed to what everyone else is doing. Not just in the practical sense when it comes to working on your channel, but also in an emotional sense too. Blogger gatherings and group influencer launches are a great way to network and grow, but I really, really hate them. I've gone to some in the past to be supportive of other creators and brands, but I find them really overwhelming, or at least the mingling and networking part. But I really like chatting with other bloggers one-to-one -one or in smaller groups, and I feel like I can focus my energy on one or two people better than I can if I try and divide my energy between 20 different people, for example. And although I might not make as many connections as an extrovert might, the ones that I do make are very strong, and last for a very long time. Tip number two, make your weaknesses strengths too. I know, I know, it sounds a bit like interview BS, like, oh, my flaw is I'm a perfectionist. Look at me, I'm so great. But you really can rock your foibles, honestly. One of mine, for example, is that my brain cannot focus on one thing for long periods of time unless I do several things alongside it which looks like pure chaos from the outside. And I was scolded as a child because it looked to others like I wasn't doing one thing from start to finish. But actually, not only does it let me get stuff done, but a lot of different stuff done. That didn't make grammatical sense at all. For example, someone might do project A, finish project A, and then do project B afterwards. I'll start project A and B at the same time, and end up finishing them at the same time that it took that person to do to one after another, if that makes sense. But if I try doing it their way, do project A, finish project A, do project B, then I drag because I get distracted when I force myself to only think about one thing. My brain is like a magpie and ideas are like shiny pennies and there are so many ideas and ah! Tip number three, harness your thinking power. As well as being creative, you're also likely to be a thinker and or problem solver as an introvert preferring to prepare thoroughly before acting rather than acting first, then adapting later. Of course, this is just a generalisation. You could be an extrovert and prefer planning, and you could be an introvert and prefer going with the flow. But as an introvert, that literally means your energy is inward focused rather than outward focused. You're likely to think thoughts with a capital T. 
I was also often scolded for being a daydreamer when I was little and was once put in time out for staring out the window for too long, even though I'd already finished my work long before the other children. Thank you, Mrs. Hashmi. But this is where your best ideas come from, so make the most of it. Oh, look at my visible hesitation here. You can just see I'm thinking, you know what? Sod it. Forget the spoon. It's hand time. And it's at this point that I discovered the original recipe is just way too sticky, so I decided to add a bit more flour. Again, all the quantities that I've listed here today are the final quantities that I use to get the correct texture. And do forgive my shoddy, shoddy editing skills. I'm still getting used to not filming in either slow motion or hyperlapse. Trust me, hyperlapse hides a multitude of editing sins. So bear with me as I get used to my new format, if you please. Tip number four, don't overthink things. An introvert's gift of careful thinking can also be a curse. Ever come up with an idea, but then talk yourself out of doing something because Ah, uh, it probably won't work anyway, or everyone will probably think it's stupid, or I don't think I could pull this off. Me too, my friend. Me too. Sure, it's great to plan thoroughly and be cautious, but take a little risk once in a while. After all, you've already instantly failed if you fail to even try. And now we're going to roll the biscuit dough out. I have this super useful rolling pin that comes with different width guides at the end, and they make sure that you roll your dough or pastry out evenly. Perfect for someone like me who has terrible judgement in both life and pastry. Now the original recipe on the cookie cutter packaging said that I should refrigerate the dough before rolling it out. I found that I didn't have to. I think maybe because I ended up adding the extra flour which gave a more solid dough. And my biscuits didn't suffer at all for it so I'm quite happy with that. And I saved a lot of time by not having to refrigerate the dough for 30 minutes. Um, I, I don't know why I'm caressing the dough right here. And just before I go on to my fifth and final point, it's now for the most exciting time of the panda biscuit making, which is making the actual pandas. Woo! Honestly, the small things in life are the best things. I have to admit, making these panda cookies was super fiddly because you're handling really tiny pieces. The only reason why I really wanted to make them is because it was my birthday yesterday and um, it's a really weird tradition that I make my own birthday cake. I've been doing it for years and years. And this year I really wanted a pandan panda cake, which you will see, hopefully if I don't screw it up, hello me from the future on Friday for my recipes at a glance video, so we will see how that goes. By the way, if you have these panda cookie cutters, which I found on eBay, do the face first. Don't do the head first like I'm doing here, because as you'll see, if you do the head first, that will then obscure where the face is. Do the face first, and then you'll be able to see through the head, if that makes sense. You'll see in a bit what I mean. Okay, my fellow introverts, I have one final tip for you, but it's a very important one and one that I constantly need to remind myself too. And last but not least, tip number five. Don't try to be something you're not. As part of preparation for life as a student living in university halls of residence, my university had us all fill out personality forms to kind of sort us into like-minded student groups so we could live more closely together and have a jolly old time. Or at least that's what I thought the plan was. I answered as honestly as I could, saying I'm pretty quiet. I don't like interacting with big groups. I prefer a quiet night in with a movie rather than going out and partying. And they went and stuck me with the loudest, most outgoing people and assigned me a room that was right outside the student pub. Oh God, if you know anything about drinking culture in the UK, and even if you know anything about students anywhere in the world, you know that for an introvert that liked quiet nights in, this was an actual nightmare. And this was my life for a whole year. It sucked. My idiot solution was to try my best to be an extrovert, and to force myself to go to parties every day and meet new groups of people every day and hang out with my flatmates every day, etc, etc. But I just became absolutely shattered all the time. Introverts? 
You know that bone-deep, brain-melting feeling of utter exhaustion after a big social event, where you can't wait to kick off your shoes at the end of the day and just go read a book or browse some quality cat videos. That was me for a whole year, but without the ability to metaphorically kick off my shoes. Thank God I came to my senses and I started getting to clubs with more like-minded people who didn't mind that I needed to be a social hermit once in a while, so thankfully I did end up making plenty of friends. But man, it was a tough year. Don't waste your time and energy trying to be someone else. There's only one you, so be the best you you can be. I know it's cheesy, but it's true. Thanks for watching and or listening. I hope you enjoyed today's video and found something in it useful. You can find all the ingredients that I used today listed below, as well as a link to my Instagram page, Tash Capes Tastes. Subscribe and hit the notification bell if you'd like more of these videos. Comment down below if you'd like me to talk about anything in particular about blogging, and I'll see you guys later. Stay safe, be nice, and have a good week.